Well, hello and good morning and welcome to another Simply Gregster EV review. We are just west of the island of Montreal and today we have a Polestar 2 all-wheel drive, long range, 300 kilowatts. This is the actually the uh, outgoing model. And today we're going out to the Tesla supercharger with a magic dock in Deep River, Ontario. And that's about 400 kilometers away. This is not going to be a specific road test of this car. Like I said, this is the outgoing model, but this is more, I have never tried a magic dock. Tesla started installing magic docks on their supercharger network last year, about a year and a half ago. And essentially it's a NACS to CCS ad adapter on the uh, version three supercharger. So that's what we're going to be using today. I, like I said, I haven't used one. I've used a couple of the supercharger networks in Europe with this car before, you have seen in previous videos. We're gonna stretch the legs on the um, Polestar and we're gonna have some fun. So come along with us. So this is the car that we will be using today. A Polestar 2, 300 kilowatt version, about 400 horsepower, 78 kilowatt hour battery. I question the long range effectiveness of this car. We left my house at 100% state of charge. We're already about 88, 89%. And we've only done about 30 kilometers. So that's not too great. But no, uh, about 20,000 kilometers on this car. Pretty nicely spec. It's always hard to tell what specs these Polestars are. They made so many different models. So we are going to Deep River, Ontario. Let's just go through this quickly before this ends up being a 25 minute video for no reason, which will probably end up. So it says here, Deep River, Ontario, I will arrive at 14% on arrival and that's with a char uh, charging stop at Electrified Canada in Ottawa. This site in Ottawa and I have quite the history. It is not a good history. This site is very hit or miss, mostly miss. We will try it. If not, there's another site in uh, Canada that I do know of that we can go to. So yeah, first stop is going to be Ottawa. We'll probably get some, we'll, we'll stop there, get some coffee and food and we'll charge up and then we'll head to Deep River. We are at 352 kilometers, three hours and 40 minutes, including the uh, charging stop. And as you see here, we are at 88% state of charge, which is what I said, 320 kilometers of range for a supposed long range EV. This is a, uh, and yeah, not too great. So we have reached Electrify Canada in Ottawa, Ontario. The charging has started, 143 kilowatts. That's pretty close to max. I think max on this car is 150, 155. We're charging here this Canadian Tire. There's the Luelect fleet there. I guess that's for rideshare. There's quite a bit of them. So we're in good company. I'm going to go get something to drink at Starbucks and we will come back and hit the road again. We have about 18 minutes here. So you may be asking yourself, why did I decide to drive what's going to be probably close to a thousand kilometer round trip to go to some random Tesla magic dock? Well, there's not a lot of magic docks deployed in Canada. This site we're going to is actually the first. And as I mentioned, this is what it's going to be pretty much going forward. If you have a CCS car, you will be able to buy the NACS, well, J3400 adapter to CCS and you will be able to activate uh, charging via the Tesla app at a Tesla supercharger for your non-Tesla. And this is a whole new wide world where now you don't have to really worry about, is that charger broken? Do I have to plan a secondary stop and all this other ancillary nonsense that's been going on with EV charging. Once the network starts opening up to everything else, to the CCS enabled cars, there's really going to be no downside to owning an EV. I mean, right now, there are a few downsides, even I admit that. Sometimes you have to think about um, charging. Where am I going to stop? How long am I going to stop for? And so on and so forth. As I mentioned, is, is that site broken or is it putting out only half the power requirement? We won't have to worry about this in a few years. Actually, in a few months or even this month, if you own a Ford product, they're going to, the network is opening up for them very soon and as I said I've never used a, a, a magic dock 
here. I've used Tesla superchargers on non-Teslas in Europe because they're CCS2 in enabled, so that makes it a lot easier. But no, finally we're heading in the right direction with, with charging and everyone's developing an ACS. So yeah, I cannot wait to get there and, uh, and to try it out. here we are juicing up we are juicing up nicely so yeah this that's how it works and it will actually tell you here on the app sorry it will actually tell you here on the app for 130 kilowatts and it will tell you everything that's going on how much you've spent and what's the charging rate yeah this is actually pretty cool let's have a look around at uh, this site so we are charging up nicely here at the deep river ontario version 3 tesla supercharger with magic dock I just wish people would clean up their garbage at these places or just keep it in your car, put it in a garbage can. But no, this is the actual dock here. These are already on sale. I think A to Z is selling these now and Tesla will make their own. Ford is starting to ship them or will ship them soon. But no, this is what it's going to be. We are charging up a Polestar 2 dual motor long range at a supercharger. There is actually not much around here. There's a gas station, there's a Canadian tire. But yeah, there's actually not too much going on around here. I thought the amenities would be better. We have six posts here, again, all magic docked. And this was, I believe, the first magic dock in Canada to operate. I've been meaning to come out here for a while, but no, it's all good. I've been to worse sites. I think we've shown uh, worse sites on, on this channel. So far, the app was good. We're charging away. Let's see what we're charging at here. 141 kilowatts, 340 amps, 412 volts. Yeah, we're charging along here good. I think we'll go up to 80 or 90% and we'll start heading back home. But uh, yeah, this was a successful mission. It's not going to be cheap, but uh, this is the only place between probably here and Ottawa, uh, sorry, uh, between Ottawa and North Bay to charge. There's another magic dock in uh, North Bay. So we'll stay here and uh, we'll charge up. So we have stopped the charge. That was an expensive charge. That was uh, from 20% to 75 or 80% was about $40. I guess about 80 cents a kilowatt hour. That was a really expensive charge. So we're going to unplug, pop this back in to the charger. We'll close up this very chintzy port. I'm glad these are getting better on cars though. I'm glad that, that uh, those are getting better, the uh, ports. These are always a bit cheap. And, and that's it, we're gonna head off. But yeah, no issues charging here at this version three supercharger. Everything worked absolutely perfectly. As I said, I just wish people would pick up their garbage more or put a garbage can here or keep it in your car. So far so good with the Polestar 78 kilowatt hour battery. This is um, the a dual motor, 300 kilowatts of output. Yeah, so far so good, everything's good. I think we're going to wrap it up here. Mission accomplished on uh, this one. 
Everything worked well with the Magic Dock as expected. Uh, I hope that uh, this is something we see more often, but I don't think we'll see too many more Magic Dock sites with uh, the adapter starting to come online. Um, they're doing their retrofits so they could communicate with the other cars. Uh, I don't think we'll see any more Magic Docks being built anytime soon. And if they are, it could be in areas like this where it's a bit underserved and not everyone might have adapters. But uh, yeah, this worked great. Absolutely happy. Everything was smooth, everything was Tesla as what you would expect. Like I said, a bit expensive, but I think there's a convenience fee in, in uh, that one. So we're going to head back on the road and we'll give our final thoughts, as I said, in the car and we'll, uh, we'll wrap this one up. I'm so happy that this ended up working out. This really made my day. Everything went very well. Everything went very smooth. As I expect from Tesla, everything worked. There was no wonkiness with the app. There was no playing the... Um, the shuffle game of trying different chargers to see if they're working. No, I followed the app, plugged in, initiated the charge. Everything worked properly from the start. This is how it's going to be going forward. Once the network starts opening, the version three and soon coming version four superchargers start coming online. Get yourself the adapter. You'll be able to charge. You'll be in, you might pay a bit more, but I think it's worth it for that peace of mind. And in my opinion, opening up of the supercharger network is going to increase the amount of companies getting involved with charging, but actually caring about charging, providing a good experience because now they have a proper competitor. So if those guys want to be successful, they really have to step their game up. Now we're starting to see companies such as uh, Walmart, Circle K, various other what uh, stores, brands, convenience stores are all coming online with their own charging networks. So it's going to get really exciting in the next few years. Uh, a bunch of car manufacturers, they're basic, they basically got together and they're going to form the North American version of Ionity called Iona. So that's, that's an excellent network in Europe. I, can't, I rave about that one. So charging is definitely getting better. Don't be put down by owning an EV because here we are. We're literally in the middle of nowhere, Ontario, and we're charging up a Polestar 2 on... A Tesla supercharger. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Remember to please click like and subscribe and we'll see you again soon.